Hey Wishtech Warriors, welcome back to the Wishtech Airsoft channel. Today we're delving into the crucial topic of every airsoft enthusiast out there. Assembling the compression assembly in your electric gun. If you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe to Wishtech Airsoft and hit that notification bell so you never miss any of our airsoft guides. Now why does this matter? Well, a well put together compression system means top notch performance on the field. Think accuracy, consistency, the whole deal. Stay tuned because we'll be breaking it down step by step from checking parts fitment to piecing together your hop up and barrel. Oh, and for your convenience, I've also included timestamps in the video description. So if there's any specific part you're keen on, feel free to jump around. Ready to check it out with Wish Tech Airsoft? Let's dive in. All right guys, let's get hands on with the fitment checks of our compression parts. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check piston to gearbox piston rails. And to do this, you'll wanna take your gearbox and you'll have it completely disassembled as you see here. You're gonna take the piston that you're going to use in your build, keep your piston head off, and this is the easiest way to find out. And what you're checking is to see if your piston is gonna bind up on the rails. Those little rails that fit right inside these grooves. So what I do is I sit down the piston inside here and I see if it just drops straight down. There's a little bit of grease in there, so it's going in slow. You see that? It should move freely just like that. Now, one thing to look out for is if it binds up and this piston binds up on the rails and I'll show you what that looks like. I mean, as you can see, the piston went in really hard. One way you can fix that is by sanding down the rails inside the gearbox. When you check your piston on the rails, make sure you got at least three screws in a triangle pattern holding the gearbox tight to simulate that it's closed. So after you find your piston is running good on the piston rails and it's smooth, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna check the meshing between the sector gear teeth and the piston teeth. To do that properly, you'll put your piston in have your shimmed sector gear in, close up your gearbox, then you'll run your screws all the way down in a triangular pattern. You wanna make sure you got a good cylinder and cylinder head in your gearbox that you plan on using. This will help simulate the action of the sector gear pulling back the piston. So the next thing you're gonna do, you'll take a pick, run it down in the gearbox, and you're just gonna simply cycle the sector gear on the piston and feel if it binds up. It should move back the piston smoothly. Once you start seeing your piston here, one thing you can do to make it a little bit easier for yourself instead of running the pick back here, once you have it started, you can just move the piston back and forth. and see if it's running on that sector gear smoothly. That will tell you if the teeth are meshing good. Cause some brands of pistons and some brands of sector gears will not work together very well. One good example is a KWA sector gear to an SHS piston. It binds up so bad that it pretty much locks up the gearbox and ruins the piston. Now let's talk about AOE, the angle of engagement. Adjusting this correctly contributes to a longer lasting setup. So take your time with this step. So the first thing you're gonna do is have your cylinder set just like this in your gearbox. Have your piston all the way forward. And then you're gonna hold your sector gear as flat as you possibly can. And you rotate it and see how well the pickup tooth on your sector gear here lays flat against the pickup tooth on the piston. So as you can see, the angle of the pickup tooth on the piston is not the same angle as the tooth on the sector gear. Typically, you'll want it at the pickup tooth on the sector gear to be at the 12 o'clock position to get them aligned right, which is right about there. If you can see the difference from there to that. And as you can see, there's more contact between the two teeth for even distribution of when this piston gets picked up by the sector gear. And that's how it will increase the 
longevity of your components here. Now, as you notice, when you do AOE on your piston here, there's a chance that it can pick up that tooth instead of this one. So what techs usually do is shave this tooth right here completely flat so that doesn't happen. Or you can just buy pistons that already have that, like this one, for example. You see that it's missing? And that's for AOE correction. Most low-end builds don't require AOE correction, only those that have a high rate of fire and hit real hard, somewhere in the neighborhood of like about 30 rounds a second at 1.5 joules or is a really good example of when to do area of engagement correction. So when you do AOE, I personally like using metal washers between the piston head and the piston because when you use what's called sorbo pads like this or like this, they compress depending on, on how much spring tension you have and it throws off your AOE in the first place. So it's just more reliable if that's what you're looking for. Go with a metal washer instead. Additionally, with sorbo pads over time, they will wear out and you'll have to replace them anyways. A really good reason to use sorbo pads if you're trying to make your airsoft gun shoot quieter so you don't have as loud as a piston slap. But again, keep in mind that if you don't glue these in right and or you don't replace them on a wear and tear basis, it's gonna screw up your gun. It'll pop loose and you can think about what the catastrophic failure would look like when this is flopping around inside your cylinder as your airsoft gun shoots. And if you have any questions about this, you can just leave the comments down in, in the comments section below. Once you got your AOE figured out and it's good to go, next, you'll check clearance between your tappet plate and the gearbox shell, as well as the cylinder and or cylinder head. We, we're looking for smooth movement without any binding. So to show you how that's done, is that you're going to put your nozzle on and your tappet plate and put it in your gearbox just like this, nothing else. Exactly like this. The key areas to pay attention to uh, when we move on to the next step is to see if the tappet plate is gonna rub on your cylinder and or on the rails of your gearbox. Because so I've had them rub on the sides and at the bottom. So that's what we're gonna check for. So you put your shell together and you wanna put down at least three screws to simulate that the gearbox is back together. Okay, so next, the next thing you're gonna do is you're just gonna grab your nozzle at the end here and move it back and forth and feel any binding or if it's grabbing real hard so it should go back and forth real smooth. And in this case, it is. If it was, you'd definitely feel it once you try to do it this way and you shouldn't feel any grabbing or whatever. You'll take your tappet plate and you'll look to see if there's any rub marks here or here or on your sides, both of them. If you can't find where it's rubbing, one good way you can find out for sure is make sure all your surfaces on your cylinder and your gearbox is nice and dry. Take some grease, and rub it on your tappet plate on all the surfaces that it could potentially rub. Now, as you can see, my fingerprint has le left some defined lines on there as a reference. If it rubs on the gearbox or the cylinder, it'll be disturbed. So I'm doing this on purpose to show you guys. So you'll see, a mo if it's the cylinder that's rubbing, you'll see grease on your cylinder and you'll see where it's rubbing on your tappet plate. You can see where the grease is disturbed. And on your gearbox, it, it didn't really do it on here, So, but, but you have to pay really close attention. And I would modify the tap plate to accommodate for wherever it's rubbing instead of the gearbox and or. So the next thing you're gonna do, you're gonna check the clearance between the tap plate and the sector gear. And only do this check after you have shimmed your gear set. Reason being is because if you shim your sector gear up too high, it's going to affect your tap plate because it's gonna possibly squish it in the gearbox and cause it to bind and then you'll have feeding issues and wonder why. Let's say your gearbox is all shimmed up. You have your sector gear right where you want it. So you're gonna take your compression assembly and just drop it right in. No spring, no nothing. Just leave it just like this. This should look just like this. You'll put the other side of the shell on, run your screws down. 
And the reason why you want to run your screws down, just like shimming, you're simulating it as if it was together. What you're going to do is you're going to grab your nozzle here and you're going to move it back and forth and watch your axle. If it moves like you see right now, that means your tappet plate leaf is rubbing on your sector gear. I'll bring it closer. You see how that's moving back and forth? Barely touching it. So you have two options to fix this. You can either A, move your shims around and lower your sector gear away from your tappet, or if you can't do that, like let's say you, you, you can't lower your gear or else it's gonna mess up the shimming for the everything else, if you absolutely can't do it, you can sand down this side of the tappet plate from here to here and at the bottom because that's where the sector gear can make contact with the tappet plate. Just take a little bit off, test it. If it still does it, send it a little bit more. You don't want to take up too much, because if you do, you risk the chance of this snapping off while this thing is cycling. I've done this sanding on the tappet plates many times before, and even took off as much as a third of the plastic in thickness, and never had a a tappet plate snap on me, especially the more robust tappets from like gate, uh, garter, etc. Now, if you really want to get your FPS dialed in to that really fine FPS consistency, there's a couple of factors other than what we just covered that can affect that. One of the biggest ones is your cylinder head and your nozzle. Starting with your nozzle, if it wobbles like this Max does, then that's going to affect your FPS consistency because if you think about it, when that thing is articulating back and forth, it's going at different angles as it hits that bucking. So the less loose that your nozzle is, the more even it's going to hit your bucking every single shot, which reduces your FPS deviance. So make sure you get a good cylinder head because that will affect it and a nozzle. The best nozzle I like to use to minimize the amount of wobble the brand is EPES because these guys make the internal here very low tolerance. Whereas Max, for example, has a lot. But if I take that off and I put a EPES in there, it's greatly reduced. It's not as wiggly. You can get a cylinder head that does a better job at holding your nozzle straight. So this cylinder head is an Action Armies and their nozzle on that cylinder head is a little bit wider than most, which helps keep that nozzle from wobbling. It also makes nozzle alignment easier when you're trying to get it right with your hop-up unit. Another factor that helps with keeping your nozzle going back and forth nice and straight is a high quality tappet plate that really grabbed onto it pretty tight and has minimal flex. And then the final thing to check is, of course, your compression test. The best way to do your compression test is to put it in your gearbox just like this. Have your tappet plate and nozzle all the way forward because that's the position it's going to be in when that piston's released. You'll take your piston, you're going to hold down that tappet plate and put your finger over the nozzle so you don't let any air escape. And then you're just going to push in your piston and let it build up pressure and see if it leaks it off. And this one is. As you can see, my hand shouldn't be going in that quick. It should be barely moving or not at all. So the key areas to check. First, see if it's your piston head. If your piston head is made out of plastic, see if there's any flashing on the backside. The flashing on the backside will allow air to escape, even though this O-ring is a good O-ring, let's say. If that's good, then it's safe to say that your piston head is good to go. Another thing to check, which I noticed right off the bat, I don't know if you guys saw it, I felt air coming out between the cylinder and the cylinder head. Despite of it being double o-ring, it still leaked by. And that's mainly because this cylinder inner diameter is much bigger than what this cylinder head can handle. Keep an eye out for the right cylinder for your setup. But I find the ZCI cylinders fit most cylinder heads without leaking. They fit nice and tight with most cylinder heads, even with cylinder heads that are just one O-ring. 
So let's say it's not coming from there. If you want to test to make sure it's not the cylinder head, just take your nozzle off and do your compression again and same thing over again. Cover the nozzle of the cylinder head over and do your compression test. It's holding the seal. Okay, so let's say your piston and your cylinder head is holding the seal just fine. So the next step, you'll want to take your nozzle, put it on, have it all the way in the forward position, test it again. Still holding the seal, pretty good. If the compression test changes, the moment you put the, your nozzle on, you'll know that your nozzle's leaking the air. Good nozzles to get is ones that have internal O-rings on the inside. Here's a white one just to give you an example. These help with the compression. Having a, a good seal from your piston head out to your nozzle will help narrow down your FPS inconsistencies. Now, if you need to revisit any of these steps, feel free to use the timestamps in the description below to jump back in the relevant section. So with our compression parts in check, let's move on to assembling the hop up and barrel, which I already done right here. So let's say this is the barrel and hop up and everything that you wanna put with this gearbox. We're gonna start by checking the nozzle length and stroke to the hop up unit. This ensures a proper seal and smooth BB feeding. It's a small detail, but it makes a big difference of paying attention to this part. Nozzle stroke is meaning the distance from here to here, from start to end. The nozzle length is of course the nozzle length from the base to the front of the nozzle. These two components can mean the difference between your gun feeding or shooting like garbage. To do this check to see if you have the right nozzle for your setup, you're just gonna put your cylinder set in your tap it and your sector gear close up your gearbox you don't have to run any screws down for this closing up the gearbox like this is just to keep that sector gear in line so you get the exact stroke that you're going to get when this gun cycles so then what you're going to do is you're going to rotate your sector gear until it's pulled that nozzle all the way back until it stops moving back then you don't want to touch the nozzle don't touch it because you want to to see if your BB will go into the chamber when that nozzle is retracted by the sector gear. So then you'll take your hop up unit. If it's a rotary type like this, then your life will be a little bit easier because then you can line it up like this. If not, you'll just have to put some screws down on your gearbox to hold together to make your life a little bit easier when you do this check. You'll gently slide it over your nozzle all the way up against your gearbox, just like this. Try to hold your barrel nice and parallel with the, your table then you'll take your bb and just drop it down to the chamber what you're going to look for as soon as this drops down is to see if it goes all the way down in front of the nozzle which it didn't it went straight down another thing you can do is just shine a light down there and to see if the nozzle's in the chamber at all you don't want that so that tells me the nozzle length is good in that aspect for feeding which in, in this case, it did not, which tells me that the bucking lips is holding that baby from entering the chamber all the way. So I'm gonna take a pick and see how much force it takes to push it the rest of the way. It took a little bit. As you can see, your bu my bucking is in the chamber a little bit. That right there has the potential of having the bucking lip fold over and jam your gun. So that tells me right there that this hop up unit or something else in this assembly is causing those bucking lips to be too far close to the gearbox and cause potential jams. So you might have to try a different hop up unit. This one in particular, I'm just using it as demonstration purposes, but most hop ups, the bucking lips won't enter the chamber that far or hardly at all. Now we're gonna check forward stroke to see how well it's going to seal. So to do that, you'll leave your sector gear in your gearbox and you'll just make sure your tap plate is all the way forward, nice and tight against the gearbox. You can even put the spring on your tap plate to your gearbox if you want to, but I don't think it's needed. Then you'll put your shell back on, grab your hop up, gently slide it over the nozzle and see if it pushes back your nozzle at all. Now, if you have a gap like that, a 
of about at least two millimeters, you'll be good to go. It's gonna seal real good and your FPS is gonna do just fine. And if the tap plate doesn't move back at all after you do that check, that means your nozzle isn't long enough and isn't gonna seal against your bucking at all. So that means you'll need a longer nozzle. So you'll put a longer nozzle in, do the checks again, and still check to see if it'll feed. If everything checks out good, then you're good to go. And there you have it. Your Airsoft Electric Guns compression assembly is ready to roll. If you found this guide helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with your fellow airsofters, and subscribe for more tech tips from Wishtick Airsoft. Until next time, guys, stay tactical and game on. See you on the next one.